We're coming in hot with inspiring guests, witty banter, and colorful commentary for today's veterans and military community. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy cause I'm facing all my giants They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it They tell me I should never even think of trying But that's just me, I'm gonna live out in defiance Alphas, we are so glad to see you I see that you have made it through one of the one of the big important weeks in veteran life you, Memorial Day Happy day, and we're so glad that you're here still to celebrate the end of May and beginning of June. That's there it is. I guess unofficially the beginning of summer, and I am still not too far advanced in my pursuit of hot Jeff summer. Um, doing <laughs> last year, you remember it was hot girl summer. I decided this is hot Jeff summer, and I still have some work to do. So. Ashley doesn't need to do anything. She's always her perfect self. And For me, it's always hot Jeff summer. <laughs> it's yeah. always hot Jeff summer. Yeah, I wish I wish I could see it the way you see it. Mm-hmm. All right, how how are things? You prepared for the heat, it, and you're still going to get up. Is, but you get up early. You get up before it gets really hot when you do your no. run. No, 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 no. I'm not an early person at all. Hate hate it. Um, I will run absolutely midday in the scorching heat. You're in you're in Texas now, so I, you may want to reevaluate that. Yeah, I did it in Georgia for years, so we'll see. In the middle of the day. Yeah, it's really bad timing. <laughs> well, I think I think I think we'll go on with that. Um, I, we we do have you have a, a story that. I, um, Heck yeah, I do. And I think it's so interesting. Let's talk about it. Um, yeah. Veteran of the day, U.S. Marine Corps veteran Dale yeah. Dye. Um, this is from Aerotech News and Review. So after his retirement, Dye traveled to Hollywood to participate in the development of military movies. He recognized that military movies were often inaccurate and unrealistic. So he, re- he reviewed scripts and historical facts and even assigned tough boot camps for actors to experience what it was like in military service. Dye worked on many Hollywood movies, including Platoon, in which he also portrayed the role of a character, Captain Harris. Eventually, Dye formed a military consulting firm, Warriors, Inc., which continues to provide several services, including research, planning, and staging to the entertainment industry. The firm has supported several films, including Forrest Gump, JFK, Saving Private Ryan, and Born on the Fourth of July. It has also contributed to shows like Band of Brothers and The Pacific. Beyond establishing Warriors, Inc., Dai founded Warriors Publishing, a firm specializing in publishing military fiction and nonfiction books. In Hollywood, Dai has been credited for work in 141 projects across the film, television, and video game industries. Recently, he worked on the film The Last Full Measure and is making his de- de- <laughs> There we go. He is making his directorial debut with No Better Place to Die. In recognition of his several career accomplishments, Die was inducted into the Missouri Military Academy Hall of Fame for Distinguished Military Service in 2022. We honor his service. What do you think, Jeff? I think I think it's awesome. I've uh, heard of him before. I think one time we were going to try to get him on, weren't we, Holly? Yeah, to, to talk about it. But we've something we've talked about that this reminds me of is how difficult it is for uh for me and i think for me to watch a movie with a veteran and you to watch a movie with your husband because all they do is point out every little every little thing that's inconsistent i hate it (laughs) oh my god i know people that will pause the tv blow up the screen and and find a ribbon that's out of order like nobody sees that in the in the in the full picture it's it's not that big a deal and doctors don't do this lawyers don't do this police don't do this they don't walk around going you'd never cuff a guy like that what this is bs i'm i can't watch this crap but, but veterans all day long all day long that that weapon that magazine doesn't have that many rounds he overshot and i'm like oh my goodness stop but uh but there's people out there like 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 Mr. Die that um, will ease the anxiety of people that 
watch military movies. So I should, yes. we should make a list. They should only watch movies that he that die worked has worked on. But then yeah. if you see it as something that's I involved in it, he may have been like, no, you can't wear that uniform. But then the producer was like, well, no, I'm going to make him wear it because it's it's shiny and and they're going to have the wintered over Antarctica ribbon, even though they're in Africa. Uh, and, and, no. <laughs> That's it my is, favorite medal is the wintered over. It is true. I know people have done some technical consulting and they were, you know, their instruction is to, you know, give advice, but know that you're not going to stop production, right? you know, because that vehicle wasn't used. Oh, so we're going to get rid of that vehicle and find the proper vehicle. That's not going to happen. But, um, but good, good on you, sir. Making movies better. Love it. And making Ashley's life at home, watching the movies better. <laughs> uh, we should put that, that, that Instagram in the, you should send Holly that. Oh, my little, little video. <laughs> yeah. Of you imitating your husband. Yep. It's amazing. All right. Thank you. Today, we're going to be joined by a guest who will prove that great things can come from anywhere, even Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Columbus, Ohio native and Marine Corps URA, veteran Justin D. Lehue, Lehue received the Navy Cross for his actions during the initial invasion of Iraq in 2003. He was handpicked to spearhead the rescue operation and recovery of the U.S. Army's 507th maintenance company in March of that year and called upon a week later to take part in the rescue operation of U.S. Army Private Jessica Lynch, which we are very thankful for for many reasons, but one of them is because she became a guest on the Tango Alpha Lima podcast during our 2021 9 11 anniversary series sidebar if you haven't seen that series it's it's a lot of good stuff there and a lot of stories that you've never heard and even some famous ones that you you, you may think you have heard like about um um jessica lynch so uh, uh we are we are linking to that series here so go on down there click it it's 20 stories 20 days for the 20th anniversary it's awesome. Anyway, Justin is an incredibly impressive guy, and we're going to find out all of the reasons, all of them, um, except maybe if he's good at bowling. We, I don't think we're going to talk about that, but you never know. Uh, you're going to have to stay tuned and find out. But you, before you do that, I'm going to need you to go ahead and take a break. The American Legion is raising awareness about PTSD and veteran suicide by offering hope, camaraderie, and support. Be the one to help end veteran suicide. The goal of the American Legion's Be the One campaign is to destigmatize asking for mental health support. Be the one to ask a veteran in your life how they're doing. Be the one who saves one veteran. Go to betheone.org and help the American Legion end veteran suicide. Will you be the one? Justin LaHue, welcome to the Tango Alpha Lima podcast experience. Glad to have you. Uh, Thank you for having me. All right, before the break, I introduced you with a little information about your military career, but before we get started here, I want to give the Alphas a better idea of the scope of what you do. Alphas, Justin is the first post-Vietnam generation national commander of the Legion of Valor. This is not the American Legion. You have some very specific criteria to get into this. It's an organization for the Medal of Honor or Navy Cross, Air Force Cross or Distinguished Service Cross. Uh, don't recruit me, I'm not eligible. Uh, he is the Chief Operating Officer of History Flight, the world's most successful private MIA search and recovery organization. Co-founder and co-creator of Amphibian Tractor Memorial and Association. And in his spare time, he spent six months of last year walking 3,000 365 miles across the entire United States from Boston, Mass to Newport, Oregon, along the Medal of Honor Freeway with 40 uh, with 40 plus pound packs. And uh, yet you found time to be here today and we appreciate you for that. You're great to have me on deck. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Jesse, we got it. We have we have so many questions, but uh, we're going to I'm going to try to contain them 
And we're going to start with uh, Ashley Gudemuth there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So you do a, a lot of different things. I would like to know, um, obviously, they all have this through line of military service and respect and, and honoring those who have served. Why do you do it? Well, Ashley, it's a, you got the best haircut in the business, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Keep you. rocking that thing. <laughs> you know, I come from a uh, I come from a small town in Ohio. Uh, and it's service and sacrifice is around every corner. You know, even as a young kid, whether it was your high school coaches, whether it was your teachers, whether it was your neighbors, uh, the town was so small and had a rich military history that everywhere you turned, someone had served. Or someone, um, someone was going in the military, they were coming from the military. So it was very open to me to see that there was a line consistently going into the U.S. military. And more importantly is I saw the product that was coming out of it. And the product that was coming out of it was the most amazing product that I had seen. And in the Marine Corps, we like to say that we build Marines and we return people back to society as better citizens. Um, I saw that in spades when I was a child. Um, so it really wasn't a no, it, it was kind of a no brainer. Uh, I was the youngest of five children. Uh, the other four children who were much older than me and my family went on to actually follow my father around and mother when they were in the military. And their lives were over by that time I came around. So we had already settled in a retirement community in a small farm town in Columbus Grove, Ohio. And I wasn't exposed to any of that, but there was something tangible I could see everywhere. And I knew my father had been a part of that and watching the actions of your neighbors and watching the actions of everybody around, whether it was soldiers, sailors, airmen or Marines, the fluoride was in the water. They all had this one thing. And I kind of wanted what it was that they had had. Well, that's super interesting. That's that's neat. I I mean, just out of Columbus alone, are you it, you weren't exactly Columbus, were you just outside of Columbus, Ohio? About two hours north of Columbus, really about nine miles north of Lima. Yeah, so I know a lot of um, veterans that have come out of that area. So it's it, I've never thought of it the way you just put it before. I think that's super interesting that it just it just sort of spread. So from humble beginnings, you became the national commander of the America America's oldest VSO. We've discussed the lofty standards of what one needs to be to be a member of this organization. Can you tell us a little bit about the the mission of the organization and and what and what their uh, typical activities are? Uh, thanks, Jeff. The uh, Legion of Valor was founded in 1890. It's America's oldest veteran service organization founded by Civil War and Indian War veterans. Uh, and, it, and it led into the Spanish-American War when the Medal of Honor was the only award for valor in the entire U.S. military. So there was no silver stars. There was no bronze stars, army accommodations with V. There was no subset of any of that. And the individuals uh, were captains of industry. They were very highly regarded people who got together in a fraternal organization that created that to promote patriotism, fidelity, and zeal. Uh, giving back uh, that which the military had given them uh, in the realms of leadership. Yeah, th th this is talking ar around a time period where it's not the industry standard that's World War I, World War II, Vietnam. It this is America's trying to make a name for itself at that time. So these individuals are out there in society, and they're the movers and shakers. Uh, they influenced American policy abroad. When someone in the Legion of Valor had something to say, they just kind of knocked on the door of the White House and talked to the president of the United States who had served with them in, in numerous theaters of operations. And over the years, uh, the 1940s, post-war period, 1950s, um, that was when a clear delineation of America's recognition of the Medal of Honor started to break away from multiple levels of valor in America. And then through Vietnam and a few other things, when other organizations really start getting um, around America uh, to the hundreds. And there are thousands of veteran service organizations, as you all know, that are out there. Uh, and they all compete by trying to do the best thing that they can for veterans. 
Well, back then there was only a couple of them. So in 1919, you know, the the World War, the returning World War One veterans, which a much larger population than the previous wars, start coming back and creating American legions and uh, the VFW uh, that appealed to a broader base of veterans uh, to be able to help the, the 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 veteran that was out there that was trying to navigate society. Uh, the Legion of Valor was created to help their veterans, and those were the ones that had held those uh, the Medal of Honors at the time, and the, the Navy Crosses, the Distinguished Service Crosses, um, uh, and later on the Air Force Cross, uh, which comes with its own set. Uh, most people don't understand it. It does come with its own set of problems. Uh, you know, a majority of the individuals that I know in life never sought to go out to get any one of those medals. And much rather would trade every single one of them back for a single life, because every single one of those medals, whether it's the Medal of Honor or any of the service crosses, those are awarded for actions that people performed on some of the worst days of their life. And every single one of those medals carries a large amount of death around it. Um, and, and I have never met a single person in my life and, and that would not say I would willingly give that medal back to just save one more life or to just have one more father come home or have one more son or daughter come home. Uh, and, and that really was the drawing factor of me in the post-Vietnam generation when an organization that was once very robust in the early 1900s all the way through the 1950s uh, I mean, there was a Miss Legion of Valor of the United States. Uh, people were brought to the White House every year, and the commander of the organization was consulted routinely by the President of the United States on veterans issues. And then in the post-Vietnam generation, thousands of veteran service organizations started to show up. And they were their own niche element representing their own niche population, which is why I absolutely love and still to this day direct all veterans, regardless of where they came from, to American legions and VFW's day-to-day -day operations of watching over the veteran that is out there and saying, there is a place that you can come to for anyone that served in a uniform of this nation, there is a safe haven. There is something we can all come to. And the American Legion has provided that in spades. Um, where a lot of the other niche organizations, let's just highlight service dog organizations, uh, legions of valor, things like that, they market to a very niche public. But the problem is, or I wouldn't say the problem, the, the beauty of it is, they're all still trying to help a veteran in a way to survive and navigate the rest of their lives and provide the opportunity for representation and a voice for the, for the individual that believes that their voice is not being heard. There is a spot. There is a podcast like this. There are people that have a larger voice that can be able to pick that individual up and say, we are not greater, we are not less. We are all served this country. And in this way, allow me to help you navigate the trials and tribulations of life. The Legion of Valor does that through two specific ways, other than just being a very um, uh, pro-American organization. They award what's called a Silver Cross for Valor. And that Silver Cross for Valor is the equivalent of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, uh, Coast Guard, you name it, their heroism medal. For non-combat actions, if somebody on I-95 today jumps out of their car in a six-car pileup when everybody else is standing on the side of the road with their phone taking a photograph of that, there are people in this world that will not think twice about grabbing that phone and videotape that. There is another small portion of society that will never reach for their phone 
will never drive past that accident site. They will stop their car. They will throw their door open, even at their own life, and they will run to the accident, just like they ran to the sound of the guns. This medal, the Silver Cross, is awarded annually, one of them in history, uh, for individuals who have performed those actions above and beyond the call of duty as a civilian or even on active duty or reserve military that's on their way to a base and see something like that, all of a sudden jump out and render a very humanitarian service to their fellow man. And I can think of no better than to see an Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guardsman, Space Force, you name it, just trying to get to work someday in their uniform, jumping out of a vehicle at an accident site and rendering aid to a fellow human being. That is the greatest recruiting thing that American military could ever put out there of who we stand for and who we are. We just have that thing that we also wear the uniform to go home um, to do whatever it is our nation does. But on a day-to-day -day basis, every one of these organizations is just trying to make the world a better place for veterans. The Legion of Valor is another one of those organizations. And it also has what is called a bronze cross that is awarded to junior ROTs and ROTC students around the world for ex excellence in academia and just being great human beings in their towns. Well, that now I know. I will not say I've never heard of them before. I won't be able to say I don't know what they do. Uh, it's 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 all good stuff and 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 to me it's it's enlightening because there are organizations out there doing things like this um without without the without the headlines and the fanfare they're just doing what they're doing and um, for the betterment of the community and the nation so thank you for that and thank you for serving them serving your organization as a national commander which I know is can be time consuming and frustrating and and all that sort of thing. Not that I've been a national commander of anything, um, except the Jeff Daly fan club. So that's and I'm working my way up through the ranks of the Ashley Gutermuth fan club. I am a I'm a fully paid up member of the Jeff Daly fan club. <laughs> so I love learning about all of that. Uh, I also want to know about how you are the chief operating officer of History Flight which is the uh, a private MIA search and recovery organization. I don't have to tell you that, but our listeners might like to know. Can you tell us a little more about that? Uh, actually, I certainly can. Um, years before, when I was still wearing the uniform, I was in charge of the Marine Corps History Division, the Museums Division, and uh, I, just an avid historian in the student of warfare. So I had known when I was transitioning out of the military, I think a lot of things is uh, a lot of people don't understand what that next chapter is going to look like, whether you've done four years or, or 40 years. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, my wife shows me all the time. Actually, this paper I filled out at a transition seminar when everybody is supposed to say, where are you from, who you are, what command you're in, and what do you think you're going to do after you're not a Marine anymore? And she said, look what you wrote down. And it said, start an MIA search and recovery organization and go around the world to fulfill America's promise that we don't leave our dead and wounded on the battlefield and, and, and we'll bring you home. You know, I am my brother's keeper. Um, actually, I had no idea how I was gonna do that. Uh, I had not had master's degrees, PhDs or anything else, just 31 years as a Marine. Uh, but like anything else, when you have a passion in life and you believe that you have a calling, uh, you find a way. You find a way to make that happen. And in 2015, I had the honor of hosting an individual named Mark Noah at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, who the Marines were going to make an honorary Marine. At that time, less than 100 individuals in the world had ever been made an honorary Marine. And I saw this package. And that year, one of the names was Chuck Norris, who everybody knows. And, and philanthropy and movies and you name it, 
it was kind of like, of course, Chuck Norris. It was like Tom Hanks, of course, Tom Hanks, uh, of course, Gary Sinise. Who's this other guy <laughs> you're talking about making a Marine? And I started to read the package they dropped on my desk and said, could you look at this? And we interested in your thoughts. And it was an individual who had not been in the military, who was using their own private funds to go around the world to relocate and return U.S. Marines on the island of Tarawa. And I knew the battle. I taught the battle. And there were 541 missing soldiers, sailors, and airmen on that island. And this individual was using private funds that they could raise to bring them home. And I found that fascinating, uh, that they didn't really have a military connection. And who is the average American citizen out there that chooses to do that with their money? Uh, when I read the list of the litany of recoveries that individuals in this international team was making, I said, of course, that individual needs to be an honorary Marine. And it opened up this whole thing that I had no idea that there were caring individuals out there that were looking to augment government services to help them fulfill that promise because the U.S. government don't have the funds nor the manpower to do the scope of that themselves, Ashley. Um, so I just started doing the research and I started learning how to build LIDAR drones and ground penetrating radar and archaeology and anthropology and started delving into books on my own time to find out how I could make a difference in that industry and bring 31 years of what I had learned in the military um, to be a betterment to society. And in 2018, after I do what every veteran does, after they've worn the uniform for that long, maybe try to grow a crappy beard, figure out that's not the best thing uh, for you that's out there. And you just say, you know, I'm not gonna do anything because I don't need to. I'm gonna relax a while. And then you sit there and you go, this isn't it, man. Uh, there's more to give. There, there's more to do. There's more missions that are out there that everyone can avail themselves to. Um, and this was the one. And I sought that out. They had a large recovery rate. And I didn't know what that organization was. And the first thing that I said is, I'd like to know where you're working. And if you don't mind, on my own dime, I'd like 30 days to travel all over the place. And what I will do is evaluate this and come back and provide you um, kind of some pros and cons on, on maybe how this could be better done and, and move forward. And when I came back, he actually said this. He goes, how much is that going to cost me? And I said, not a single dime. Um, he said, that is utterly amazing to me. Because the last time that I had somebody try to do that, they came back and said that you owe me $60,000 for that work that I had just went out to do that evaluation. And I said, you should never pay that for that evaluation for people who actually give a shit and care. Uh, the right people will come along and they will do that. Uh, and the right people came along. We then started to build a very successful and robust team that survived COVID. Uh, and survived those challenges since 2018. And here we are in 2023, ladies and gentlemen, with 391 accession recoveries around the world uh, and 162, as of two days ago, positive identifications and funerals and individuals given full military honors that are well-deserving of that from post-World War II all the way through the present wars today to be able to say, you know what, that stuff that we all learn, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, that we don't leave our fallen comrades behind, and we will come and find you, that there are people out there in life that are willing to put those actions or, or those words into actions. That's amazing. Right, Ashley? This is your question. I'm sorry. I'm following up. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. And I, I love how, like, every aspect of you just sort of tries to find ways to help people. So I I think that this this sounds like an amazing program and just a, like everything that you're doing is Thank you Ashley uh, very much. All right. Uh, I would I would I would caution you to uh start saying in the future that your 31 uh years in the Marine Corps 
is equivalent to several master's degree and a PhD in awesome. I agree. Oh, well, thank you, Jeff. That's awesome. And if we quantify that in cat and dog years, <laughs> that would sound even more impressive. <laughs> so, you have a doctorate in awesome and simplifying. <laughs> um, I, I've been feeling a little humble talking to you, but now I feel like we're, we're going to talk about something where I'm on equal ground. Yesterday, I think I eclipsed 3,365 steps by foot. So I think we're, we're kind of the same. Uh, <laughs> transitioning into Long Road, where you walk the entire, U wait, the entire United States? I walked to Trader Joe's, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, from Boston to Newport on Route 20, which is the Medal of Honor Highway 3,365 oh, miles by foot. Got it with 40 plus pound packs. So I'm going back to humble because you did 3,365 miles, not steps. <laughs> uh, can you, uh, what was, ah, uh, oh, now I'm upset. All right, Team Long Road, can you tell me about that and make me feel like I need to do more with my life even more? <laughs> Jeff, uh, that, that, that anybody getting out there makes steps is a hero in my book, man. And, and, and they just keep moving. Right, because I I think that's a resounding theme uh, for all veterans that are out there. Is just just take one more step, just keep moving. There there are good days, there are bad days, and and, and everybody in history has had those. Uh, just take another step. Just just get off and, and do something. And one of my friends who used to work for me, Sergeant Major Coleman Kinzer, he retired in 2019, and and he was kind of my right hand man when I had the Third Marine Regiment in Hawaii which was the largest strike force in the South Pacific. It was, it was phenomenally awesome uh, that was out there to have that Marine regiment in the middle of nowhere in, in Coleman named Rocky when Rocky was still in uniform. And then I brought Rocky out of the Marine Corps and he went to Europe and started working on, um, it was the U.S. Army Air Corps. Uh, I lost B-17 and uh, my partner went out uh, excavated, and as of a couple of days ago, we identified the the pilot, the uh, the bombardier and the navigator, and we brought them home. And we roughly coming out of COVID, we had always thought about because Rocky didn't get a chance to see a lot of the world that I did um, when we were all deploying. My parents took me a lot of places throughout the United States, and every time we would sit down over a cup of coffee and have a conversation. I'd talk about Devil's Tower or the Grand Canyon or something, and Rocky would be like, I served 24 years as a Marine. I never got to see any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I took upon myself to expose um, Rocky and kind of reward uh, for that service and sacrifice. You need to see what you fought for. You know, let's go to a Chicago Bears game. You're a rabid Chicago Bears fan. So here's some tickets. Let's go see your Bears. Have you ever saw a game in your life? And he's like, no, I haven't. We're going to see the Packers-Bears game. And we're going to spend a couple of days as guys who really care for each other and hang out like that. So we did that here at History Flight to be able to return lost Americans. And then COVID shut down a lot of that because it's international. These missing in action are all overseas. And I had went to the post office one day, Jeff, and there was a tattered POW MIA flag at a post office. And I just walked in, asked them if I could do whatever I could do to replace that, help them replace that. And a lady just said, "What? why does that matter so much to you? I, I really don't know what that is, but you could understand she was concerned. And she said, we've already put in an order that it'll be replaced. And she had said, why does that matter? And I said, because there are over 81,600 individuals that that flag represents across America that gives us all the reason that we are Americans today. And it is the only flag that is authorized in all 50 states to fly underneath the American colors. If you go to Iowa or Florida or somewhere else, the state flag, of course, is authorized to fly underneath that. But no other flag in America in any state is authorized to fly under the national colors except that black and white flag of the POW MIA. And I said, uh, I think people need to understand 
the reason why it was so important for a generation to put that there. Because in our wars, and I'm looking at everybody on here, our wars were all post-Vietnam. Um, we brought our individuals home. We didn't bury our people on foreign soil. So Americans are losing a lot of the meaning of what that POW MIA flag is, but it still flies out there on every federal installation, um, at post office, you name it. And that's exactly was the inspiration to say, how can I be like this minstrel Indian chief in the village to tell the story on why people should care about that flag? And Rocky and I decided, we're going to take the time and walk across America, not ride, a, not drive a car. Everybody does that. Uh, a few people ride bicycles across America. No one ever walks across America because it takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. And more importantly, it is absolutely excruciatingly painful <laughs> your body by doing that. The oldest warship in the United States we're both naval infantrymen as U.S. Marines. We're going to start from the deck of the USS Constitution. And Highway 20 is the longest American highway across the United States. Why the longest American highway? To me, it represented the longest journey that veterans have taken since 1775 to protect this nation and give us the rights we have today. And it was going to be 40 pounds on our back to represent the packs that the US military and the burden that they have carried since 1775 on keeping our nation free. And we wanted it to be a little painful uh, that was out there because when it is painful, it makes you reflect and it makes you remember. And even when you're remembering the pain, you're remembering the pride, the sacrifice um, that generations, that centuries of Americans have done before you. Um, that makes that pack the lightest pack I've ever carried in my life. It really does. When you have, since 1775, you feel you're carrying the nation on your back that says every mile or every foot, I'm going to be able to see the beauty that it is that I went forward and fought for, that all of our national cemeteries are reflective of the individual sacrifices for, and it also gave you the opportunity to step away from the internet and the media to see America for what it really was. And I am here to tell you, we walked across 12 states, 3,365 miles. Mark my words, Americans, all Americans have more in common than they do have in differences across this. They, we didn't see the fighting between Republicans and Democrats. We didn't see neighbors out there that wasn't going to help their neighbors, even though that they're flying different flags in their yards, saying that on voting day, I vote for this, I vote for that. And a lot of the media would have you believe that that greatness of America is gone. I'm here to tell you that greatness of America exists in spades out there. And the average everyday American that is just trying to make a living for their family, do best for that they can for the United States of America and, and just contribute. Um, we found that in spades for six and a half months. And we walked through some of the most contentious places that the media will tell you in the United States. These people don't believe in the flag anymore. These people are burning down buildings and doing this. We walked exactly through every one of those. And you're exactly, you've hit the nail on the head. There's, you will find one person in every one of those places that was doing some of that. Hmm. You will find the other 99 that had nothing to do with any of that, didn't believe in any of that, and they are doing the best that they can out there for all of us. And that is what gave us the confidence to understand that you step away from that TV and you step away from that social media at times, and get out there, get to learn your neighbors, go downtown and you socialize and you do that, you will find out that the, 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 the fabric of America is as tough, it's like Teflon. It's as tough as it's ever been. And, and, and I will tell you, man, 
God, God, whatever, against the individuals who stood, who are out there rattling sabers and swords, trying to think that they're going to tear at that and slice through that, because the average Americans, your listeners, people in the American legions, W's, everybody, we have a contingent of individuals that just ain't going to stand for that. And this is going to be the way, kind of like the Mandalorian, right? It, this is the way <laughs> we are as Americans. Uh, th this is the way. We have been born in battle and flame since 1775. History tells me that if you just understand the basic fundamentals of how America was created, and you understand what it has taken to exist as America, then you understand that we need to cultivate a warrior class in this country still and maintain that warrior class. Because every 20 years, we all get together and have to giddy up and go somewhere else to defend democracy and the attacks on this. And if it isn't every 20 years, Jeff, Ashley, Holly, you know the deal. Every four to five things in between there, we have to go to smaller areas to make sure that the fabric is still tightened while we are preparing for the next 20 year period that historically is going to come. So it is one of the greatest honors of my life to engage people in conversation walking across America that have very different points of view. And I, I love those points of view. Um, it's who we are as Americans. But when you can take five minutes and you can explain what I just did to them, regardless of how they're raging or what they do, they totally understand the need to have a military, why America has to have a strong military, and why American veterans are who they are that has held that together. Because we have not went a 20 to 30 period, year period since 1775 where everything we're talking about has not been tested. So why would we think the next 20 to 30 years are going to produce any different results if we already have the blueprint on what we need to prepare for? So I admire the American Legion. I admire the veteran service organizations. I admire what you guys are doing with this podcast to keep that fluoride in the water out there because the next generation is going to be tested more differently than the previous ones. But the expectation of that generation eventually is going to be exactly the same since 1775. And at least it's going to be exactly the same while there are people on this earth walking around like me on my watch. I think that's fantastic. I think I, everything that you've said, it's, you're so right. The thing, the way that things are, that change, but ultimately, you know, we're all, one group that wants to help each other out and get along. So I see that too. You know, I get some hate online for whatever, but I know it's not the majority of people. So I think it's wonderful you highlighted that and everything you've been doing. Thank you so much for chatting with us today. Uh, Jeff, I don't know. I want to say the Mandalorian, this is the way is one quote, but I think you, you should end it with, I have spoken, which is another, I uh, have spoken another Mandalorian quote. I love it, man. <laughs> um, we could we could probably do a whole show on the walk uh, across America because I'd I'd have many questions, uh, many many questions about walking that far because literally Trader Joe's and I come back and I feel like yeah I've done something today, um, and uh, but we we don't have we don't have the time to fully dig into that. I hope you write a book about it one day. Please actually please do write a book about that walking across America. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. I'll, I'll take that under consideration if I'm not walking again somewhere. <laughs> we can take voice notes. and Awesome. <laughs> and Ashley will type it up for you. She's good at that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for a, a plethora of information and inspiration that I think our alphas now have yet another uh, role model to, uh, to base some of their goals on in life so that they, we can all achieve um, our own levels of greatness. You've you've touched on a lot of things that we've talked about before. We've we've had a we've had a, a, a POW on the show, uh, Jessica Lynch. We've had um, what else did we talk about that um, 
that we, but, but, I mean, and Americanism in general is just one of the pillars of the American Legion. So um, you've given us like a, a documentary that we could we could air about Americanism and hopefully rejuvenate that spirit across this great land of people who, as you said, have more in common than we do um, not in common. I was trying to think of the <laughs> trying to think of the opposite word for that, uh, but. You know, I'm gonna save that for you know my little my little Marine Corps study session after I, I finish this podcast here. So thank you so much for uh, for being here. As Ashley said, we appreciate you uh, and your work. And for the alphas, we're gonna continue this conversation. Um, what's oh, Holly was miming something and distracted me. Uh, <laughs> So we're going to continue uh, the conversation uh, about Justin, not with Justin. And we're going to do all of that after we give you, my friends, my alpha friends, a little break. Family and community engagement. The American Legion meets the unique needs of local communities. We are veterans strengthening America. We are the American Legion. And we are back and you are broke. I mean, no, you took a break. English. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ashley, do you have any takeaways from that interview? I feel like he's doing absolutely anything and everything to help other people, which is always wonderful and to continue to push forward that what was instilled in him when he was younger which is that sense of using service to the betterment of society and i think in there are people there are people that help people but some of the people that help people are are doing it you know in in massive well lit spotlight and he seems like he doesn't care about that stuff He's just trying to get it done and make the world um, a better place today than it was yesterday and then repeat, 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 which is um, very admirable. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm locked. I'm loaded. Yep, we go. All right, we are ready for today's edition of Rapid Fire. Pew, 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 pew. Top enlisted soldier calls out leaders to show up at PT. This comes from the Military Times. This is at Fort Eustace, Virginia. The Army's, the Army's top enlisted soldier has called for leaders to show up at both physical training sessions and their soldiers' dining facilities. What I ask you all is, what I ask you all as leaders is, are you there? Sergeant Major of the Army Michael Grinston said to an audience of nearly 800 officers and senior listed on April 26 at the service's annual Holistic Health and Fitness Symposium. You don't have to lead it. You don't have to be up front. You just have to be present, Grinston said. PT isn't about PT, another uh, person, Cloper, said. The Army doesn't have a push-up problem. So I feel, <laughs> I feel like uh, at the beginning, I I would have said uh, he's calling out he's calling out people that outrank him. Him could have been saying, "Are they could have been saying, are you calling me fat?" You know, I don't but, know, outrank him though. I mean, geez, the sergeant major of the army. I mean, I understand right. how it all works, but God, I would not say that to his face. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said these are senior these are senior people he's talking to. So yeah, but even like a regular run in the mill colonel is going to be a heck of a lot more really deferential to any sergeant major, but let right, alone the one of the army. Right. Cause they <laughs> speak for the, the top general in the army. So, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think? What do you think of this idea of having, I think they get up too early. The army, they get out, they do this PT. It's like five o'clock in the morning, you know, maybe they make it like two, 2 PM, you know, when the senior leaders have had their coffee, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's uh I mean, why the heck not? I don't understand the PT isn't about PT. I guess that's I thought that it was a continue to keep their bodies in shape, you know, and you do it all together so there's like camaraderie as well. But if you're to say that it's not about 
No, yeah, they're saying well, the the next pair the next part I didn't read it says that the H2F which we've we've had a we've had a show about um it's it's not just about that. It's you know, it's nutrition, sleep, mental, spiritual, and it's leader development. Okay. Well, sleep, I would say just make the PT a little bit later in the day. Then they can sleep some more. And then I fixed it. You fix everything. Yeah. Because then they'll eat right. They'll have then the, yeah. Yeah. They'll skip breakfast and they won't have to do so much cardio and yeah, they'll be good to go. Look at this. They're gonna be yeah. workshop in it. All right. And go find our H2F episode if you want to know more about the Army's program. Um, and I don't think sleeping in was on there, but we're going to double check. I'm going to fact check my statement there and see if Ashley and them are synced up. All right, we're going to go on. We're going to move on to rapid fire now. We're pew, pew, two. Food delivery driver dashes into Army ranks after chance encounter. It's from the Army Times. Uh, a fortuitous encounter between a food delivery driver and an American brigadier general set the driver onto a path that culminated with her May 11th graduation from basic training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. PFC Patricia Limbaga, an immigrant from the Philippines who was working for food delivery company DoorDash when she crossed paths with Brigadier General Richard A. Harrison, the Deputy Chief of Staff at Army Training and Doctrine Command, and the officer put in an order for, after the officer put in an order for two Subway sandwiches. Limbaga wanted to join the armed services, she told Harrison, but she struggles with learning English. Her struggles with learning English, along with mine, were preventing success on the military aptitude exam. The young lady was just about ready to give up on her Army journey Harrison told ABC Columbia, and she came by my house to deliver DoorDash. She got out of the car and walked towards me and said, oh my God, you're a sign from God. Harrison introduced them Gaga to the Army's future soldier prep course, which helps candidates raise their performance physically or academically so that they can enlist. This is like a movie. Yeah, it sounds like, sounds like a great program, doesn't it? It makes sense. All right. You know, the like if you're there's a program, if you go to the Naval Academy where they take you like a year beforehand or the summer beforehand and they um, try to help you with academics and, and things like that to get to to where they need you to be. Why the heck wouldn't you if you've got people that want to do it and they need a little help because maybe they grew up in an area that had crappy schools or, you know, things like that, that they just don't know. We always assume that everybody knows everything we know. But look at that perfect example of somebody that she needed a little bit of help and now she's a soldier amazing and i think programs like this two things programs like this are really important when we're facing uh, enlistment issues uh, they claim they can't find people who are qualified well get them qualified and then the the second thing is just this story i mean delivering door dash and running into a general who <laughs> This general who and you would be afraid of as a as a private in boot camp would avoid them at all cost. Um, is you're sitting there talking and and this general fixes your problem. I think that's amazing. I'm I'm impressed. All right, we're moving on to rapid fire number pew pew pew. That would be three. All right, Reddit post leads to top arm. This is an all army. Rapid fire. Uh, Reddit post leads to top army leaders crashing soldiers reenlistment party. Uh, it didn't say party. I added that. That's militarytimes.com. When Staff Sergeant Dylan Coons decided that he would indefinitely reenlist into the army, he took it to social media in January to see if he could make this reenlistment a special moment. And what better way to do that than get two of the army's most senior leaders on the enlisted side and officer side to participate in the ceremony. Koontz has been in the Army for 10 years and now serves as the 30th Air Defense Artillery Brigade out at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, shout out, wondered what are the odds that he could get Army Vice Chief Staff General Randy George as his re-enlisting officer and Sergeant Major of the Army, second appearance in today's show, Sergeant Major of the Army Michael Grinston to hold the flag at the ceremony. He worried, though, that it was too late to get him on the books for the ceremony. 
I wanted to try to do something big because this was the last reenlistment, Koontz told Military Times. I've done the cool location with a cool thing for it. So I was just thinking to myself, how could I really make this as big as it could be? Lo and behold, Koontz, Koontz said some wonderful people came together to make sure he could get his wish for his reenlistment. George and Grinston took part in the ceremony in February. Again, movie. Awesome. Also, uh, his, he you can reenlist for 10 years. Uh, that's interesting to me that he was just like, OK, doing the final. No, he was plan. already in for he was already in for 10 years. He was in, but they said this is his last reenlistment. So then he's doing it for another 10. Yeah, it's like yeah, four. It said indefinitely reenlisted. I don't I don't actually know what that means. So mm -hmm. I guess that just means he. He's not going to he's going to stay till retirement, I guess. Cool. No, that's awesome. I'm glad they participated. Yes, that's that is awesome, and it's weird. It's all army rapid fire, and the sergeant major of the army we mentioned twice, and it's like we're sucking we're, up to somebody. I don't they're know. gonna get big heads. Let's knock them down a peg. Yeah. We better get T-shirts or something. <laughs> all right. Any final thoughts or shout outs? I got no shout outs. Do you have any shout outs? I actually don't today. And someone's gonna be mad. They're gonna be like, "Oh, you had a shout out, and you didn't shout mm -hmm. me out." You just do it. So, Que pasa con eso? Which is what's up with that? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Why don't you take us home? All right, everybody. Can you please not forget to subscribe to the Tango Alpha Lima podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Spotify. That's actually a new website. Um, it's specifically for invertebrates. Um, or wherever you consume podcasts. If you could leave us a review and just make sure it's a big old five-star rating. Otherwise, I will wait until you're really thirsty and then I'll bring you a bottle of water, but I will have left it out in the sun. So you won't know if any of the plastics have leached into the water and you'll think about that forever. We don't have a cure for that now, so that's on you. Um, I just want the world to know how much you love us. So if you have a guest recommendation, I want to talk to them. Go to legion.org forward slash tango alpha lima. Click on the suggested guest link. This week, I'm suggesting Jeff Daly. What do you think? Silence. Sergeant Major of the Army. <laughs> Somebody suggest Sergeant Major of the Army. See if Henry, yeah, Henry can get him. Let's, yeah, let's see if we can get him. <laughs> All right. You know you reminded me of with that hot water bottle. Yeah. Back. Um, kids don't do this this these days, so some people are this is gonna be an age an age border. Remember when we used to drink out of the hose? Uh, the hot yep. water yep. that hot water would come out mm -hmm. and uh the dumb kids drink it first and then Smart was like, no, no, you go ahead. We try, we act like we were polite because mm -hmm. we learned we learned last summer. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Alphas, for being a part of our show today. We think we packed a lot in there, and uh, we packed a lot in there. You got a lot of stuff there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna call this one quickly. I'm gonna call season four, episode one sixty one, mission complete. Mm -hmm.